welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Day five on going carnival. What I do on day five? Well, I'm still working on the sous vide project. I really needed to get a clear container that was square to use for the sous vide circulator. And the circulator arrived on day five. So I went out to Lotus, which is half, half food store, department store, does a lot of stuff. And Noi picked up a clear container for use with the sous vide. Is it perfect? No, but it works. Okay. The inside of the barbecue charcoal grill dial thermometer, it arrived on day five. The laser thermometer for checking out your searing temperatures. It arrived. By the way, it's real handy for telling you how cold the pool water is. You can check the, the temperature of the sidewalk, temperature of the steps, temperature of the pool water. From a distance, just squeeze the trigger. That laser thermometer is pretty slick. And right now, it's middle of winter over here in Thailand. So, at noon, even though the temperature was 30 degrees Celsius, which is, I don't know, 30 degrees Celsius is 86, somewhere in that neighborhood. The pool water was only 27 degrees Celsius because we've had some nights that went down to 25 and so. So, the pool water has been getting a little bit on the chilly side. So, the laser thermometer will be good for that, too. So, what else did I do? For meals, bacon and eggs, and for dinner, we had grilled Atlantic fresh caught salmon steaks. And they were delicious. And uh, basically had those and was just fine. For what else did I do? I get sick of the knives around here. Now, when I grew up, my dad's brother was named Bill Hanna. And he sold butcher equipment to butchers. He sold them their butcher scales. He sold them paper to wrap the, the butcher stuff or the meat in. He sold knives. And he sold expensive knives because butchers don't use cheap knives. I mean, a butcher and a cheap knife won't last long. It'll be a quick divorce. They want a knife that's easy to handle, that cuts easily and holds an edge, and more importantly, takes an edge after, it's, after it has dulled or rolled over the edge. So my uncle taught me a lot about knives. But I couldn't find the type of knives that he sold, which I'm still trying to remember the exact name on. I thought it was a Forschner. Anybody know in the comments, Forschner or Forschner? Maybe it was a German knife or, a, or it could be a Swedish company. But by doing my research on YouTube, I found some butchers who are really good 
and it's their channel is called the Bearded Butchers. Bearded Butchers, and they sell grills, and they they take cows in straight from the farm, and they they kill them and slaughter them and cut them and sell the sell the meat right out of a retail shop and or they'll sell the meat back to the farmer if he wants to bring a cow and get that done and they've got grass fed and they've got uh, grain fed and everything in between and one of the things is they have a whole series of videos on the knives that they use and they seem very happy with the brand Victorinox. And if you don't know what Victorinox was, remember the red Swiss Army knife? The one with the, the blade and the screwdriver and a little pair of scissors and all the stuff that fit in the Swiss Army knife to that thick? That was a company called Victorinox. And they make some really good knives. The blades are good. They've got the right amount of stiffness and flex. The steel's quality. It holds an edge for a long time. And most of the time, you can use a sharpening steel. So what I do, I ordered some knives. Got crazy here. I ordered... Victorinox serrated knives for the kitchen, about a six inch blade, and they have a sharp tip on them. The knife has a very sharp tip. If you poke yourself in the hand with that knife, you're going to hurt yourself. And then I also ordered a few serrated steak knives that have a rounded front tip like a butter knife you're less likely to poke yourself but the blades are still super sharp I ordered a couple paring knives from Victorinox and I ordered a sharpening steel smooth and that way I can keep them nice and sharp so, the other thing was, I ordered a Inkbird INK-VS03 vacuum sealing machine and some extra rolls. Because my first effort at sous vide, the water displacement method, of a brisket in a, in a plastic bag is sort of a pain in the ass. The vacuum sealing method and vacuum bag in a sous vide, much better. And I know that because I had one. So, gone is that, in comes this. Then, what else did I do? Well, I had some pork chops, had some eggs, had, uh, hmm, took some ground beef. Noy browned up some ground beef in a skillet real good. And then took scrambled eggs, poured in over the ground beef, and made this like ground beef omelet breakfast. That was really good. And uh, for dinner, I think we had salmon on day five. But during the middle of the day, I said, okay, that's it. And I went through the refrigerator and everything that I was eating that I'm no longer going to eat, I took out put in a box, went through the pantry and took out all that poison shit I've been eating. Potato chips, 
pretzels that I looked real hard to find in Pattaya. I finally found the Foodland store in Pattaya had these really pretty good pretzels, uh, flavored pretzels, but you couldn't go buy like Roll Golds or Snyder's or anything like that. They were just average pretzels. I mean, they weren't anything to write home about. But then I took all the things that had sugar in it and things I wasn't going to use, baked beans, uh, other type of canned goods. And we put them on a box and we're going to ship them up north to Udantani's to Noy's family up there and let them have them. I don't want to eat them. And I damn sure don't want to stare at them every day when I open up the closet. The other thing I've been doing, which has been okay, is when I wake up, the first thing that I used to do was get coffee. A lot of these people had talks about your cortisol levels. When you wake up, having coffee the first thing, all that stuff. You know, just do you do it right away or do you hold off and wait on your coffee a while? So I've been holding off on my coffee for an hour or two before I end up having coffee. And... I'm not on such a strict carbore diet that I don't put. I gave up milk in my coffee, pure milk. And I went to very high fat whipping cream. And it's such high in fat that you can use a lot less of it, but you still get that flavor of a cream in your coffee type thing. And people claim that when you're on a carnivore diet, you need fat. You need electrolytes and you need your meat products. Preferably, if I had my choice, it would be nothing but uh, meat from cattle and bison and deer, things, evidently, beef have multiple stomachs, and somehow or the other, and I'm not sure exactly how to explain it, but a lot of people seem to think that makes for the best effect. And see, with this carnivore diet, one of the biggest things I've picked up from all the people I watch who are on it and doing it and been doing it for a long time is the amount of inflammation in their body really decreases. People talk a lot about the inflammation decreasing, their acne clearing up on their skin, their skin having a different glow to it. Yeah, and a lot of it's just meat and fat. I mean, a lot of these people, they save their bacon grease. And then when they're cooking something else, they pour their bacon grease right on top of it to get that fat. Or they even buy, uh, they'll buy tallow, like Wagyu beef tallow, which isn't cheap. And they'll put that in because they want to have some fat. Now, if you're really obese like me, your body wants to burn the fat. So until you drop a good amount of weight, you shouldn't worry about adding extra fats the way I see it. Listening to everybody I listen to. Because the people adding the extra fat those are people that 
lost the 100 pounds, lost the 85 pounds. They're down to a weight that they're more or less happy with. And now their body doesn't have a ton of fat on it to burn. If your body burns fat, it needs fat to burn. In my body, I don't have to add any extra fat. It's got plenty of it stored up. Yeah, you know, the fuel supply here is pretty good. I have more fat than the U.S. government has oil in the strategic petroleum reserves. So I don't need to add fat. I want to burn the fat. That's ideal. Make me burn the fat. So what else do we have on day five? Well, day five, we have the scale arrived, and I was able to do a wake-up weigh-in on day five. Now, my wake-up weigh-in is get up, go in, brush your teeth, take your shower, come out, get on a scale. And I figured when I started, I was 175 kilos. When I first weighed in with the new scale, it was 164.9 kilo. Well, that's 10 kilo. But that probably all water weight and other things. That's 22.3 pounds on day five. Now, I didn't have a scale on day zero, one, two, three, so I'm sort of guessing at the 175. My last known weight was in July of last year, weighed on a very good scale at Bangkok Hospital where I was getting the physical of my life. And that was 171 kilo. So even even at that weight, which I know I was, I'm heavier than I was last July. If I wasn't heavier than I was last July, I wouldn't want to do this so much. I finally reached the breaking point here. But even at that, it's six kilos, which isn't too bad. So I'm going to weigh in every morning after I get up and take my shower. And that's my wake up weigh in. So when you stop back, you'll see if I'm stalling around or not. I'm sure there's gonna be plateaus and stalls and so forth, but that's day five. Not uneventful, a lot of things happening. Thanks for watching. That's all, folks.